Sega. Well, one of the great things about virtual tennis is the ability, you know, to play with some of the top players in the world. You also get to play in different locations, which are fantastic. You know, we have Dubai, we have Shanghai. You know, we brought new players, we have new 3D crowds, we have a great sounding environment. And it's just a fantastic evolution from VT3. The idea with World Tour is basically the users get to create their own character and they basically take them through a career. We now actually divide the game into two sort of races. The amateur race, so you play for all those circuits and then you actually progress on to the pro race. When you're in the amateur race, so you play so against lots of different characters that you're not familiar with, the atmosphere of the matches will be a lot more sort of subdued and quiet. And then as you progress into the professional levels, then you'll get to meet against the big name players and you'll also get more of the atmosphere of the matches. Obviously, we looked at the roster of tennis players that we had from Virtual Tennis 3, and we wanted to update this. So some of the new players that you can see in the game are Murray, Djokovic, Kuznetsova, Ivanovic. They sort of enhanced the roster that we already used to in Virtual Tennis 3, and it allows you to play with, basically, the latest players. So one of the additions to VT 2009 is the Tennis Academy, and the idea is that tennis pros, legends will come in and coach you, so people like Tim Henman will run you through the basics of short, and you can learn all aspects of the game. And the idea being that you can work on one particular area and develop that play style, so if I want my character to be a fast runner, I can work on just those areas and my player will become a fast runner. In Virtual Tennis 2009, obviously, we brought back the mini games. This was you know, a fantastic feature of VT 3 but we wanted to really update these. We basically reviewed all the games that we liked and had a little bit of a poll on which were the games that everybody liked the most. And We kept the six most popular ones and then we did six new ones as well. So for anybody who loves the sort of meat defender crocodiles, we've actually taken that theme a little bit further and got to things like zoo feeder where you're having to feed all the different animals with different fruits and foods. I think one of my favourite ones is probably pool, which is actually a giant game of pool but just played with tennis. And this will be the first VT which can actually play multiplayer online. So we're working to try and make all the games online playable. And you'll be able to play with up to four players, either turn-based or simultaneous, depending on what the game is. In the shop you can buy, you know, specific rackets, shorts, shirts, shoes. Some of that does affect your gameplay. I mean, tennis rackets have slight balancing to them, so it's just those little minute tweaks in the game that allow you to maybe win that match, maybe last a bit longer, that kind of thing. We've looked at all the stadiums and we've enhanced the, the look and feel of them. From a gameplay perspective, it still has that feel of VT. And it allows you to know that the ball will go faster on harder courts. You'll still get the sliding on clay courts. And that's one of the aspects of sort of real tennis that we have to bring into the game. And the brand new over-the-shoulder camera gives you a real sense of being inside the stadium. I think one of my favourite aspects of VT 2009 is that it still maintains the fast-paced arcade gameplay that we've all kind of grown up with over the years. We all used to play the original VT 1 and 2 on Dreamcast in the office. So it's still got that feel, it's still fast-paced, it still looks gorgeous. You still get these big sort of epic rallies going. It still captures the same arcade feel that we all kind of grew up with with the original VT 1 and 2. The last few years have thrown up some of the most dramatic matches. And you just had the crowd and the sound interaction was fantastic. So what we've done is created a full 3D crowd, but within that, that affects sort of key moments when you have a difficult rally, you don't know who's going to win, you're trying to outthink the player, and the crowd just goes completely silent. You just get that last shot in, you win, and boom, crowd gets up, you get that big rush, and that's just one of the moments that you just think, ah, oh, brilliant.